Hi, I'm Paul. Are you struggling to organize your Obsidian Vault? In today's video, I'll show you how I use folders, tags, and links to create a powerful interconnected network of information. By the end of this video, you will have valuable insights into how to use folders, tags, and links in Obsidian. Join me as we cover the essentials and even do a short tutorial to get you started. Understanding folders, tags, and links. Obsidian organizes your files and notes using three main methods, folders, tags, and links. Folders can provide the overall structure for large areas or categories. Tags can offer cross-cutting ways to categorize notes in the same folder. Links can build relationships between notes, creating a rich interconnected knowledge network. These methods help you manage, categorize, and navigate your notes effectively. Each has its strengths and specific use cases. While each of these methods serve a distinct purpose, the true power of Obsidian lies in combining them. Showcasing folders, tags, and links. So here we are inside Obsidian. Let's do a quick folder tour. So we have the note lab here where all our notes go by default. This is when we just want to get a note into the system without having to think about where to put it. So when we need to capture the information quickly and we don't want to organize, notes go into the note lab. We then have our map of contents. So this is our index and map of contents. And this is going to contain our data queries, which, we, which lists all the notes inside our vault and how old they are. Uh, we can have these for books. You could even build wikis inside there or anything that you're learning. Or you can just have a simple inbox which contains each folder inside your vault. We have a quick look at cards. Inside cards, we have concepts, explorations, ideas, people, quotes, tools, travel. So a card is a piece of knowledge and we use these to build and connect knowledge in our vault. It's used for recall and reflection. So we can put a tool in here that we've taken from another source, we can link those to our topics. So let's jump down to spaces. So this is my favorite folder. Spaces is a place to show your work, to steal your ideas, and use notes from your vault to express what you're interested in. So I use these four drawings. So you see I've got one here about note taking. Obsidian's true power, you get the idea. You can put all your canvas mind maps in here. I quite like learning because I can put everything that I'm learning in my learning folder. The next folder is vault. So vault is a place to store your captured info. So this is where all your literature notes go. So it can be anything listed here. I use this mostly for books and YouTube videos. I've recently done a video on how to organize your YouTube video notes. So your journal is where you store all your private notes. You can do your cycles and reviews, your brain dumps or thoughts. You can have your daily notes in here, weekly reviews, quarterly reviews, monthly reviews, plans or meetings. So the toolkit is your storage space for fonts, images, PDFs, manuals, scripts, snippets, templates. This one gets mostly used for templates. So let's run through in a scenario. Let's say that we have found a YouTube video that we want to take some notes on. Could be this video. How do we get this note into our vault? Well, we've got a few options. We can create a new note. And we can apply a template to our note. So we'll say insert template and we'll use our YouTube video note template, how to organize your vault. All right, so then I have my metadata that I have to enter up the top here. If we open up the note lab, we can see how to organize your vault is in the note lab, but we want this note to be down here in the YouTube folder. So we can right click and we can move the file there but then that's distracting us away from taking the note. So a better method would be to automate this process. And we're going to automate it with a community plugin called QuickAd. So in here, I have a whole bunch of automations programmed for entering notes and organizing notes 
inside Obsidian. When I first started taking notes on YouTube, I used this note about YTV. YTV stands for YouTube video. If we click on the cogwheel, you can see it's grabbing my template, which is the YouTube video template. And then it's asking for the value and then it's placing it in this folder location here. Now you can do this with the templater plugin. I just find this is really user friendly and easy to modify. So let's just run this quick add command and I have a shortcut down here. I'm just going to run note about YouTube video, how to organize your notes. So let's have a look now in our boat. We now have how to organize your notes in the correct place. Now here comes the interesting part is because we are learning something from this YouTube video. Technically, it should go into our spaces, my learning folder under Obsidian because we're learning how to organize our notes inside Obsidian. However, we've captured this information from YouTube. So it is meant to go in our vault as well, right? So there's a conflict of interest there. So this is where tags come into it. So we can see up here we have tags. So I could add a tag called my learning. And now I have a tag for my learning. Now the disadvantages of using a tag here as opposed to placing this note in my learning folder is when I want to flush out this note later on, I have to do a tag search for my learning. I can't just go straight into my learning folder. However, I could go into my YouTube folder and it will probably be in there as well. If you use folders, then you can still capture your information to the YouTube video note and place it in your YouTube folder, but then create a second note. For example, we'll go into my YouTube folder and I'll look at this stable bit drive pool, which I recently did a YouTube video about. And you can see here I've got all my AI summaries that I took and I've got my metadata in here. But I've made this link here, see learning note, drive pool and snap road. So if I open this one up, I know where it's located. It's located in my sysadmin here under drive pool and snap road. I've given it the same tag, my learning, but I've also placed it into my learning folder because it's something I'm learning from YouTube, but I've still kept the YouTube reference down in the YouTube folder. So that's one of the disadvantages of folders is you might want this note here to be located down here as well, but you don't want to have two copies of the note. So how do you determine which one goes where? The way that I do it is I kind of look at this note on the left hand side down here as my literature note, which is essentially just copying and pasting the information from the video. And then the note to the right hand side is my distilled note. So that's the note that I've written from the literature note on the left hand side. And you can see I've still got the literature note key points here down the bottom. At the end of the day, as long as you know where the information is, you don't need to worry too much about where you place it inside your second brain. So let's have a look at our tags now. We're going to go to my, and then we're going to go down to learning. You can see to the left hand side here, we have a whole list of notes with the tag my learning. So we don't necessarily need to place these in the spaces my learning folder in order to find them. Although I don't actually use the tag search to flush out notes from my second brain. I think Obsidian tags become quite useful in the Obsidian graph view. This also showcases links as well as how we build relationships between notes. Let's go open the Obsidian graph view. You can either go to your ribbon and left click open graph view or hit control P type in graph and then select graph view. I've also got a hotkey set up control G. Once we have the graph view open, hide your left and right pane. Up the top right you have open graph settings and then we have a area for our filter. We're going to enable tags and then we're going to search with our tags. So this is quite useful if you want to flush out a tag within your vault. In this case, I'll choose my seedlings and that's going to give me all my notes that have been planted as seedlings. 
so I could flush out any notes this way. The seedling tag is for notes that have just entered your second brain. We'll take a look at the focus tag. From here, we can navigate to the focus map of content. Inside there, I have links to authors that speak about focus. We've got books and we've also got action items. We can hide this little settings here. Just close to go back to the graph view. So we can see we've got other tags here. We've got idea. We've got one for learning up here. We've also got productivity down here. So these are all related. If I was procrastinating and I needed to go read about some tools or ideas on how to overcome procrastination, also got a link to productivity here and idea. Here's a tag on energy. We have authors that write about energy, books, and some action items. We also have the tag here, which if we click, will give us a search on the left-hand side. So I think that's more of a useful way of using tags in your second brain. We'll now look at how we can create connections between our notes in Obsidian. So if we jump into the source mode here, we can see we have our YAML properties up the top here with a link to the author, Carol Dweck. Then we also have a few links down here to her best ideas from the book, as well as a tool, an external source where the information has come from. If we open up our side pane, jump into our hotkeys, we'll just type in the word local. We can see here we have the graph view, but this time it's the open local graph view. And I've set an hotkey there as Alt L. So let's go hit Alt L. Alt L is going to bring up the local graph view where we can easily reference other notes and see a network of ideas connected to the book mindset by Carol Dweck. So we can see here we've got our mindset idea which is here. We've got our mindsets which is over here. Then we also have some related topics here, such as goals. And if we click into goals, that's going to load up goals on the left-hand side. And then we can explore further into goals if we want to further explore notes that we've written related to goals. If we want to go back, we can go up here, go back to mindset, and we can explore further. So say we want to drill down into habits now, and we can see we've got our habits here. And then we also have a lot of notes notes connected there. We've got a book here by Aidan Mills, Be Unstoppable. So we can hit our middle mouse button. That brings up the Be Unstoppable. Then if I hit Alt L again, now it's going to show me all the connected notes to Be Unstoppable by Aiden Mills. So links are very important for organizing information, building a network of ideas. The navigation is really fluid and easy in Obsidian, and you can quite easily just click around, explore different notes that you've taken over a long period of time. Even if you need to just go back and be more disciplined one day, you can go into your discipline topic and you can just go through some of the action items here on how to be more disciplined. One annoying point with the local graph view, it does flip over to uh, the tab mode. So you may find yourself flipping back to stack tabs up the top here. I have a little commander tab here, so I just hit that one. So I don't always have to go up here and click stack tabs to get back to it. So yeah, always link to the topics or ideas. And over time, you will have a powerful tool for organizing, connecting and navigating notes, which will enhance the ability to manage your knowledge effectively. And it will aid in the development of your personal knowledge base for your second brain how to create folders, tags, and links. For anyone that's new to Obsidian, we'll just do a quick demonstration on how to create folders, tags, and links in Obsidian. So to create a new folder, you simply come up to the left pane and left click the new folder button. Then you just give it a name. If you wanna create more folders within that folder, you can right click and select new folder, and then that becomes your first subfolder. If you want to delete a folder, right click and delete it. You can also add it in your file explorer where the vault is located. So if I come into my toolkit, right click, left click, show in system explorer. Inside there, I can right click, create a new folder. 
and it's going to create the new folder inside. And if I want to delete it, I can right click and delete. For tags, tags are initiated by a hash and then the name of your tag. So it could be something like my and then put a forward slash tag. And then that's going to group it under the parent my. And if we scroll down, then we can see that tag is listed here and there's one reference of that tag. You can also just nest it as a parent tag. So you can see any tags that already exist will show up in a little list view here. So let's choose our spanner. We can also add tags as YAML with three dashes and we just type tags. Now we have a tags property. Alternatively, if you are already in the live preview mode, control semicolon, then select tags, and then we'd add our spanner tag if it already existed. This is clickable, so if we click it, it will load all the notes with the tag tool spanner in there. And if it's embedded in the note, it will also do the same. If we want to create a link, we can create a custom field and we could call this one topics. Then if we have any existing topics, it will ask us to add that topic. So this one could be inspiration. So we can see there we now have a inspiration link. It will show in that color because there is no note associated with inspiration. But if I hit the middle mouse button, now I have a reference note. If I want to delete, I can right click and delete. We can see out of those three there, Creativity has notes embedded, but biography and inspiration does not. So if I hit biography, you can see that's empty. And that could be a tag with a Windows full stop, it could be a seedling. So that indicates that I need to come back to the seedling to work on it at a later stage. And I can filter that on the left hand side. Any existing links we can trigger with two square brackets, and then it's going to give us an option of which note we would like to add. So we'll just add biography. Now we have a link to biography. So if we hit the middle mouse button, it goes back to that biography note with our seedling. Then we can also do OL, which will show our local graph view. We have our folder tags link demo in there. And so far we have our inspiration biography creativity and biography links. So they're showing up there. We also have our backlinks and we also have our outgoing links. We can see here on this selected note here, our outgoing links are inspiration, biography and creativity. We don't have any link mentions of this particular note. So if we go into creativity, and we'll just make a mention of folders, tags and link demo. Then when we go back to folders, tags and link demo, we can see that creativity has a link mention of folders, tags, links, demo. This is quite useful when your notes start getting more links. So if we just close these, you can see there's a lot of link mentions to creativity. And I also have a lot of links, a lot of outgoing links from creativity. So that may or may not be useful. I hope this video has showcased the power of folders, tags, and links inside Obsidian. These methods can transform your note-taking experience. Experiment with folders, tags, and links in your own Obsidian Vault and see how it can improve your productivity and organization. If you found this video valuable, please consider sharing it with a friend who might also benefit. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.